online and here in the sanctuary. Welcome to worship with Trinity Reformed Church. We are a community God gathers, transforms, and sends to share Christ's expansive love with the world. If you're new to Trinity and here in the sanctuary, I invite you to fill out a welcome card. Those are in the Bibles by your seats. Online, please send us an email. Wherever you're at, we want to connect with you and share more of what's happening in our life together. A few announcements to highlight this morning. The first is that this is the last Sunday to order lilies for our Easter service. Lilies cost $13 each. To get your order in, please email Pastor Sarah or sign up on the lily order form on the Welcome Center table. So that's the deadline is today. That's the key thing to know. Second, uh, we're starting a new adult second hour series today on the art of bathing. We're grateful to Craig Hansen for leading this series. We'll be meeting right here in the gathering area after worship, starting around 1120 or so. Excuse me. We will close this wall again to signal that the seminar is about to start. Finally, a few people have been wondering about when and how Trinity will consider revising our current uh, COVID prevention practices. We will take up those questions and more at our consistory meeting tomorrow night. So please keep our elders, deacons, and pastors in your prayers as we seek to offer faithful leadership to the church. Right now, let's center ourselves for worship by singing our Lenten theme song, Thirst No More. You can find that song on the purple insert in your bulletin. invite you to rise in body or spirit as God calls us to worship. If God is a hen, we are under God's wing. If God is a table, we each have a seat. If God is a house, 
we are safe from the storm. If God is a party, we are invited to dance. If God is a melody, our voices join in the tune. If this is God's house, then all are welcome, all are loved, all belong. Let us join our voices and worship our God together, singing number 529 in our red books, Gather Us In. Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was and is and will come again. And all God's people said, I invite you to be seated. Family of faith, we come to confession because we know that change starts with honesty. In a desire to grow and change, let's pray to the God who loves us like a mother hen. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. You weep over our sins and our pride. You tenderly draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness, you nurse us, and with pure milk, you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. In your love and tenderness, remake us. 
For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For God will hide me in shelter in the day of trouble. God will conceal me under the cover of God's tent. God will set me high on a rock. Siblings in Christ, listen, believe, and proclaim the good news. God's love is overflowing. We are drenched in mercy. Thanks be to God. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another. Here we come, find a dot. <laughs> There's one right there, Daisy. Look, are we ready? Let's pray together. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here everywhere. All right, in just a minute, if you are going upstairs for children and worship, you can follow Miss Amanda. And for those of us who are staying here in the sanctuary, I invite you to turn to number 755 in our red hymnals and we'll sing together, Speak, O Lord. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness. Let the light of might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes and your glory. Just Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, true humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 27. You can find that on page 437 of our Sanctuary Bibles. Let us listen now for the word of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 13. We'll read verses 31 through 35. That's on page 849 of our Sanctuary Bibles. At that very hour, 
some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Outside of the city of Jerusalem on the slope, of the Mount of Olives, there is a chapel called Dominus Levit, our Lord wept. According to tradition, the chapel sits at the place where Jesus stopped to weep over the city of Jerusalem. And when one sits inside this small chapel, she looks forward to a wall of windows at the front of the sanctuary. These windows frame the modern-day city of Jerusalem, from the Dome of the Rock to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and all the bustling city streets in between filled with pilgrims from many faiths and many nations. And positioned just below this living stained glass window is the church's altar. And on the face of the altar is a circular mosaic of what never happened to this city. At the center of the mosaic is a white hen with a golden halo around her head. Her wings are spread wide, providing shelter for seven yellow chicks. And the image is surrounded by a circle of text of Jesus' lament over this same city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, it says, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But set outside of the circle, just under the feet of those tiny chicks, are the words, and you were not willing. In different gospels, Jesus' lament over the city happens at different points in Jesus' ministry. But what's true in each telling is that by this point, Jesus is no longer just moving from city to city, place to place to share the good news. At this point in his ministry, Jesus has a final destination in mind. At this point in the gospel, Jesus has begun to speak of his coming death. And in the gospel of Luke, we have been told that after the transfiguration, that moment up on the mountain where Jesus' glory was revealed in the world, after that, we are told that Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. And he did so knowing what would await him there. So as the readers, when we come to the text for this morning, we know what Jesus is doing. We know where Jesus is going, and we know that he is determined in his mission. But the Pharisees still seem to hope that Jesus can be distracted from his destination. This is one of very few times that Jesus receives what looks like help from the Pharisees. Usually these religious leaders are coming to Jesus with tests or tricks or threats, but this time they seem to be coming with a warning about danger. 
Get away from here, Jesus, they say, for Herod wants to kill you. Now, maybe this particular group of Pharisees are really concerned about Jesus. I shouldn't lump all first century Pharisees together. But I think it's just as likely, if not more so, that these religious leaders deliver this warning in hopes that it might subdue Jesus' voice. Just before the Pharisees speak up here, Jesus has once again been prophesying the turning upside down of the world's status quo in the coming reign of God. Jesus was describing the final judgment to come, and he paints this picture of religious insiders cast out and those from far-flung corners of the earth being gathered and invited to come and feast in God's kingdom. Indeed, Jesus says, some who are last will be first, and some who are first will be last. And it's at that very hour, Luke says, that these Pharisees, the epitome of the religious insider, come to warn Jesus of the threat Herod poses on his life, and to encourage Jesus to run, run far, far away, far away to hide from these crowds that are eating up Jesus' words, to hide from these crowds who are vibrating with the hope that Jesus might be the Messiah they've been waiting for and that the world might be about to change. But whatever the intention of these Pharisees, Jesus does not doubt the truth of their word. Jesus doesn't doubt Herod's threat on his life. As we've seen, Jesus has been turning over the structures of power around him, calling out the hypocrisy of those with authority and speaking of a new coming kingdom of God. So Jesus doesn't doubt that the same Herod who beheaded his cousin John for his prophetic voice might well now be seeking to silence Jesus as well. But what Jesus does not accept is that Herod's threat on his life should deter him from his destination, from the purpose for which he has been sent, and the purpose toward which he is journeying now with every step. Go and tell that fox for me. I must finish my work. Jesus is determined in the face of religious and political opposition, in the face of human systems that resist change at any cost, in the face of personal fear and suffering, Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem, and he must finish his work. And yet... Jesus' determination doesn't mean that this work, this journey day after day toward the city that destroys God's messengers will be easy. In fact, it seems as if this journey to the city where God has longed to dwell with God's people seems as if this journey is tearing Jesus apart. Jerusalem. Jesus laments, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Jesus loves Jerusalem. Christ longs to gather the people of God together, to shelter them and care for them, to protect them and guide them through this journey of life. In the words of the psalmist, God's desire has always been to shelter God's children in the days of trouble, to conceal them under the cover of God's tent, to set them high on a rock, But what has torn God's heart apart again and again, what weighs Jesus down on this journey toward Jerusalem is that God's love has gone unrequited. You were not willing 
Jesus declares. You did not long for the shelter of my wings. You have fled from the protection of my love. If you have ever loved someone that you could not protect, you understand the depth of Jesus' lament here. He weeps for the city, for the people, for the creation that has rejected the warmth of his embrace. It seems strange, doesn't it? Why would anyone reject God's protection? But Jesus isn't surprised because Herod is a fox and Jesus is a mother hen and we are the terrified chicks. In Jesus' day, as in ours, to call someone a fox implies an element of craftiness, of scheming, and deceit. Foxes are not to be trusted. No one loves a fox. Foxes are out for themselves. They will take what they want using any means necessary, including taking the hen. It's not a coincidence that Jesus paints this picture of his love using the image of a fox's prey. Foxes eat hens. And for that very reason, Jesus says, Jerusalem and humanity as a whole have refused to be gathered up under my wings, to accept the shelter of my kind of protection. Because in the eyes of the world, the hen looks weak, and Herod, that fox, the powers of this world, they look so much stronger. We have seen yet again in these last weeks the destruction the foxes of this world can wreak in the hen house. As we have watched Russia invade those they call their siblings in Ukraine. We live in a world that relies on power and dominance. And Christ, the mother hen, offers something very different. Something weak, pathetic even, in the eyes of the world. In the face of a fox and panicking chicks, Christ, the hen, stands firm. Wings spread wide, breast exposed to the predator, calling out to her children. The love a mother hen offers is her body as a shelter to shield her children from danger, even giving up her own life rather than sacrificing one of the chicks in her precious brood. Barbara Brown Taylor writes, the posture of Jesus is the most vulnerable posture in the world. But if you mean what you say, if you truly love, then this is how you stand. The shelter of a mother hen looks weak to the world. For she cries out to her children, not with threats of punishment for the enemy, not with shrieks of dominance and power and violence. Instead, the mother hen cries to her children with tears and lament, with words of gentleness, love, and unconditional welcome. Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem, knowing that in a world of foxes, his own death is certain. But in the upside-down realities of God's reign, maybe better described as the right-side-up realities of God's reign, Christ's love is stronger than his fear. Because if you mean what you say, then this is how you stand. 
This is how the God of the universe chose to reveal God's heart to the world most fully. In a world full of foxes, God comes to us with wings spread wide, shielding her chicks with her own body, dying to offer them life. And the shocking good news of the gospel that has been revealed in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is that this seemingly feeble protection is more powerful than all that assails us. The shocking good news of the gospel is that in a world full of foxes, it is the love of the mother hen that will stand fast. The shocking good news of the gospel is that in the right side up, reign of God, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, and life is stronger than death. Friends, we live in a world filled with terrified chicks who long for the power of the foxes who pursue power by sending forces to invade the homes of neighbors, who seek security by amassing wealth while others go hungry, who defend their own worth by demeaning those who are different. But in this world full of foxes, Jesus offers us a different way. Our mother hen spreads wide her wings and journeys on toward Jerusalem, heart made vulnerable to violence and pain, seeking still to gather up the ones God loves. And Jesus' words invite us still to be moved by the wings of the mother hen. We are invited to be swept up beyond our fear, beyond our desperate bids for power, control, and independence, to be swept up, to trust the embrace of our God, to be cradled by love and grace and mercy. Friends, God longs for us. God loves us. God stands with wings held wide to gather us in a holy embrace. May we open ourselves to be gathered up under the wings of our God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your wings spread wide love. We give you thanks that even still you long to gather us up as your children. We pray that you would help us to turn toward you and to trust in the power of your love, even in a world full of foxes. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our mother hen. Amen. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our song of response. It's number 689 in our red hymnals. There's a wideness in God's mercy. <laughs>
invite you to be seated. In a few moments, when all things are ready, we'll invite you to come forward to receive the communion elements. Come down the center aisles and begin in the front rows. Um, the, all the communion kits are gluten-free. Please take them back to your seat using the side aisles and then partake of them there. If you want to remain in your seat, you can raise a hand and a server will bring the elements to you there as well. Let's begin our great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift, Lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. God of holy abundance, your love never runs out, your hope never runs dry, your joy never gives up. In a world that loves scarcity, your abundance is shocking. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending your son, Jesus Christ, into the world that we might taste and see that you are good. And so with your whole church on earth and all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. abundance. You summon all who hunger and thirst to come and be satisfied. Bless this bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the same night in which he gave himself for us took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread. And he gave it to them, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they had eaten, Christ took the cup. And gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Dying you destroyed our death. Rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, God. Lord Jesus, God in glory. 
God of holy abundance. You fill us to the brim with your grace. May this eternal food nourish us through times of uncertainty and fear, that we might share your bread of life and cup of salvation. Make us your church, a fountain of your living water, until the day when hunger and thirst are no more, and we live your life abundant together with the communion of saints. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ, Christ is, is the, the bread, bread of life. Christ's blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is the cup of our salvation. These are the gifts of God for, for the, the people, people of God. God. Come for all things are now ready. Having been fed at God's table, we offer a prayer of gratitude and intercession. And today, throughout the prayer, I'll say, God, in your mercy, and invite you to respond, grant us your peace. Let's begin the prayer with those words now. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. Holy Trinity, thank you for gathering us under your wings at this table. May the bread and cup you offer give us courage so that our offerings, our gifts, and our lives may become signs of your reign in this world. Lift our hands to join yours in working for justice and peace. We long for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for your church throughout the world, that all who bear the name of Christ may find true repentance for their sins and walk in the way of peace. Guide the church in Russia to stand against war and aggression. Give comfort to the church in Ukraine as they lead funeral after funeral. Convict the church everywhere every time we fail to treat other people as beloved children of God. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for the nations of the world, remembering we share one planet and one destiny. 
We pray for the people of Hong Kong as their freedoms are curtailed and their hospitals are overwhelmed with COVID cases. Grant them health and wholeness. We pray for Poland and other Eastern European countries opening their arms to millions of Ukrainian refugees. Grant order and resources so that everyone can find shelter and rest. We pray for the people still in Ukraine suffering bombardment and deprivation. Grant them deliverance and hope. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for the leaders of the nations uniting against the Russian invasion and working to add pressure toward ending the war without escalating the violence. Grant them resolve and wisdom. We pray for the leaders of Russia and all who start wars. Grant them the desire to work for the common good of all people and to repent of arrogant nationalism. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for our enemies and opponents. Keep us from demonizing others. Keep us from ignoring what you would teach us from the other side. Keep us from painting whole groups of people with a broad brush, especially the people of Russia. We ask your blessing on all the ordinary Russian people inundated with propaganda and shielded by censorship. We pray too for the thousands of Russians who are leaving their country to flee the hardship of sanctions and the danger of oppression. We ask you to protect those brave Russian people showing up at protests and risking the danger of dissent. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for the poor and the vulnerable among us. We know inflation and economic troubles have the greatest effect on those who have the thinnest margins of safety. Provide an abundance of food, medicine, and education in our land and throughout the world. Help us to work toward access and justice for all. Unite our voices and our efforts so that all may have what they need to flourish. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. We pray for the people close to our hearts, for those who are healing and for those who need more healing, for the people contemplating important questions and for those raising important questions, for those seeking to continue on a long road of faithfulness and for those seeking to make a fresh start. God, in your mercy, Grant us your peace. We thank you for all the blessings in which we share, for the reduction in COVID cases in our community and the signs under the snow that spring will soon be here, for the joy of worshiping together and the opportunity to learn from our mistakes, for Luke Harkema's call to serve in Stanton and for Lisa and Amanda as they continue their seminary studies for the promise of your presence with all people and the hope that you are at work even amidst the violence of this world. God, in your mercy, grant us your peace. Amen. Our song of sending is on a tan insert in our bulletins. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing, God is holding your life. Lift up your eyes, behold the hills. Where will help and rescue come? We call on one who made the earth, who blessed the stars and sun. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding. 
invite you to join hands or raise your hands as a sign of our unity in Christ. And now as we go out from this place to live as people sheltered under God's wings, we go with God's blessing. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.